I said there's connections between last Sunday and a parable, last Sunday's readings, and today's gospel readings, and they're very much interconnected. As you recall from last week, the only name Jesus gives us in all the parables he said was Lazarus, the beggar that sat at the rich man's door. Because when he and the rich man both died, Lazarus is in heaven sitting next to Abraham, and well, the rich man is someplace else where it's a lot hotter. And he looks up and he sees Lazarus in heaven next to Abraham, and he begs for help, and Abraham says, I cannot send anything to you down there. So the rich man says, well, send Lazarus to my brothers so they may be warned and change their ways and not end up like I and I have ended up. And Abraham says something quite remarkable. Even if they see someone rise from the dead, they will not believe. Well, last Sunday we had Jesus rise someone from the dead, and that name was Lazarus. That's not accidental. The Lazarus does rise from the dead, and the people see it because this miracle doesn't take place way up in Galilee. This miracle takes place a mile and a half out of downtown Jerusalem. A lot of folks in Jerusalem saw Jesus command Lazarus to come out of that tomb. A few days after Jesus raises Lazarus from the tomb, Jesus enters Jerusalem, the first gospel reading from today. And the people are rejoicing. They're waving their palms. They're yelling, Hosanna. They're saying, this is the prophet from Galilee. And they're very intrigued and they're very excited. They've seen Jesus raise a dead man. And now they think they have something special here. But then a few short days after that, that very same crowd is screaming, crucify him, crucify him. Give us Barabbas instead. What happened? What went on? Well, first of all, you can say, well, maybe Abraham was onto something when he said, even if they see Lazarus rise from the dead, they won't believe. And you know, it's true. It's very true. Jesus' own disciples didn't really understand what Jesus was about until Jesus himself rose from the dead. They were with him when he rose the son of the widow of Nain from the dead and Je uh, uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead. That was up in Galilee, but they were there to see those miracles. And yet when Jesus asked them who the people say they am, he'd say, well, some say you're a prophet, some say you're John the Baptist, risen from the dead, some say that you're Elijah who's returned, or one of the other prophets. And who do you say I am, says Jesus. And Peter says, we are the Messiah, the Son of God. So Jesus explains to them what that means. And what that means is, the Son of God, the Messiah, has come into this world to take upon himself all sin, all the sins of the people there and all the sins of the people who will follow, and take those sins upon himself to the cross as the ultimate sacrifice for those sins, so that the gates of heaven may be opened to those who put their faith in the Son of God. That's why he's here. And Peter says, oh no, don't let, God forbid that should happen to you. Because Peter is think not, cannot, con, you know, cannot conceive of that, at least not yet. Later on, he's going to understand. But at that time, he can't conceive of something being, someone being crucified and that in any way, shape, or form being a good thing. And Jesus' responds, get behind me, Satan. You think as men do, not as God does. So all those people cheering Jesus as he's entering, waving their palms and singing Hosanna, are people who really don't have an understanding of what Jesus is about. They project what they think the Messiah should be doing. And many of them think what the Messiah should be doing is getting rid of the Romans, you know, making our country independent. Or maybe they think he's there so they can heal anybody when they're sick. Or maybe they think he's there just to raise their loved ones from the graves as they stand. But Jesus is there, as we know, for much, much more. He's not there for temporal salvation. He's there for eternal salvation. And the people never grasp that. They're disappointed because their expectations haven't been met. But God does not live with our expectations. He has his expectations. And his expectations is that if we have the courage 
find enough courage deep within ourselves to say yes to the Lord. I do believe. I will follow you. I will have the courage to take that love you have given me and share that love with others as Jesus shared that love with his disciples and all who would listen. Then that sacrifice on the cross will open the gates of heaven for me and their life and an eternal life will await. Mm -hmm.